2022 was filled with special sports moments that the city of San Antonio will remember forever. And as we turn the page of 2023, let's take a trip down memory lane and remember the top 12 storylines from the past year. Number 12 starts the list the same way we started the high school football season with the KSAT Pigskin Classic. Three great games featuring six proud programs decided by a total of five points. And one of those games went to overtime. Smith Valley edged Reagan in the opener, giving head coach Larry Hill an emotional victory. Then Mark Soto led Judson to a thrilling shootout win over his former team, John in overtime and Steele rallied past Brennan en route to an undefeated regular season. Now we're already excited to do this all again this coming football season. Number 11 helped prove that San Antonio is soccer central. UTSA women's soccer team claimed their first conference USA title. The six seeded Roadrunners defeated Florida Atlantic 3 2 in extra time off of the championship and finished the season with 12 wins, second most in program history, and their second ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. Plus, they got to celebrate with the football team on the Riverwalk. At number 10, the XFL is bringing professional football back to the Alamo City. Steelers legend Heinz Ward will coach the San Antonio Brahmas, one of three teams in the state of Texas. The A-team XFL will kick off less than a week after the Super Bowl, and we hope to see the Alamo Dome packed to support the Brahmas this year. Number nine had the city of Dehennis parting like it's 2019. Almost three years to the day, the Cowboys completed a sweep of the UIL Class 1A state titles in baseball and softball. The softball team earned the program's second title with a 6-2 victory against Hermley, while the baseball team outscored both of their state opponents 20 to nothing to claim their third state title, a fitting end to some remarkable careers for all of the high school seniors on the roster. Coming in at number eight, the O'Connor softball team's historic run to their first UIL Class 6A state title. The Panthers trailed El Paso Americas 3-0 in the semis, but rallied to win the game 7-5 thanks to a two-run homer from Jada Munoz in the bottom of the fourth. They trailed 3-0 again in the championship game against Mansfield Lake Ridge until Munoz tied the game with a solo homer in the bottom of the sixth. And A.J. Sanchez drew a game-winning walk in the bottom of the seventh in a thrilling 7-6 victory that secured the program's first state title. At number seven, Taylor Nunez lit the track on fire this past May. The Randolph freshman won four gold medals at the UIL State Class 3A Track and Field Championships. She started her day with a victory in the long jump, then won the 100-meter dash in state record time of 11.59 seconds, struck gold again in the 200-meter dash, and finally anchored the 4 by 100 meter relay to gold. Her efforts helped the Rohawks top the team standings for the first time since 2012. Number six goes out to the city of Bernie. It wasn't just the record-setting Greyhounds football team who nearly finished an undefeated season as Class 4A state runners-up. The boys' soccer team claimed their second straight state title with a 2-1 victory against Selena. Bernie's tennis team finished as Class 4A state runners-up. Both the Greyhounds and Charger boys' basketball teams competed in the state tournament. The champion girls' cross-country team finished as state runners-up. And the Charger boys' water polo team played in the first UIL State Championship game right here in San Antonio. There's definitely a lot to celebrate in Bernie as the calendar shifts to 2023. Number five is a memory that will last forever in the city of Uvalde. With the tragedy of Rob Elementary still fresh in the community's minds, the Coyotes rallied to win their home opener against Eagle Pass win 34-28. With 36.1 seconds to go, senior Jonathan Jimenez turned a play that was going nowhere into a legendary moment, cutting back against the grain of the defense for a 50 four-yard run that gave Uvalde new life. Quarterback Brody Carnes then found Devin Franklin for the game-winning one-handed touchdown catch with just 12 seconds to go as the Coyotes celebrated an emotional victory in the Honey Bowl. At number four, San Antonio FC completed arguably the greatest soccer season in USL championship history. The Alamo City Club won the Copa Tejas, defeated Austin FC in the U.S. Open, claimed the regular season champion shield, won the Western Conference trophy, and then claimed the USL Championship Cup and a 3-1 victory over Louisville City FC at Toyota Field all within a single calendar year. SAFC certainly proved they were mentality monsters and they celebrated in style with a river walk parade and a dive <laughs> into the river. Number three is for all three of our college football powerhouses, UTSA, UIW and Trinity. Head coach Jeff Trailer and the Roadrunners showed <clears throat> that last year's historic run was no fluke going undefeated in a Conference USA play and claiming their second straight conference championship 
with a thunderous victory over North Texas in the Alamo Dome. Quarterback Frank Harris was the star of the show and announced he would return for one more year. Under first-year head coach G.J. Kinney, UIW boasted the best offense in college football, finishing the regular season with a 10-1 record as Southland Conference champs. They then won two playoff games in thrilling fashion over Furman and Sacramento State before falling against nine-time champions in DSU. And finally, head coach Jeremy Urban led Trinity to an undefeated mark in the regular season and the first Division III playoff victory in two decades. San Antonio was lucky to have these three squads representing the city throughout a memorable and historic season. Their combined record was 34-6. and six. Number two, we celebrate the second member of the Spurs Big Three inducted into the May Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, Manu Ginobili. The Spurs legend and San Antonio favorite became the fourth Spurs player inducted into the hall last September. Ginobili was the first Argentinian to play in the NBA and famously won an Olympic gold medal with Argentina in 2004. He won four NBA titles with the Spurs over a 16-year NBA career, all right here in San Antonio, and he owns the best winning percentage of any single player in NBA history. Gracias, Manu, and we hope to see fellow Spurs legends Tony Parker and Greg Popovich join Manu in the hall next year. Finally, number one, the drama surrounding the Spurs and Joshua Primo. The Spurs abruptly released Primo on October 28th with little explanation and removed all of his gear from the team's store. Then in the following days, reports indicated that Primo had allegedly exposed himself to multiple women in different cities. Dr. Hillary Cawthon, former Spurs psychologist, sued Primo for indecent exposure and the Spurs for helping covering it up. She held a press conference with attorney Tony Busby and filed a lawsuit in Bear County. Now, the Spurs responded with a statement of their own, and all parties agreed to a settlement in November.